Hello and welcome to another edition of The Extra Point. I am Kimmel Gammon. I am joined by my good friend, Danny Welniak. Danny, thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. It's going to be fun. You know, it's really cool. You know, we got to know each other because of your time working with the Chiefs Radio Network and um, on the sideline. And uh, just so much about you is, is so interesting to me. And you, you're the one that I, I really targeted and wanted to have on here uh, as soon as I could. So um, first off, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, it is a huge blessing. And the fact that you even thought of me to do this, I feel incredibly honored. So thank you. Well, you're welcome. Well, if you don't know, and most of you do, but if you don't know, uh, Danny uh, went to Oklahoma State University, correct? Go Pokes. Absolutely. Go Pokes. You had that on here <laughs> earlier. And then you um, uh, you did some, you've, you've done a lot of unique things, but we're going to start with this one, which is uh, you have a unique tie to football. I want you to tell, you know, just people about that. Okay. So um, I actually played women's professional football for the Dallas Diamonds for uh, five seasons and four years. There was mm -hmm. one year where it overlapped because we were trying to not compete against the NFL season. So um, I like to say that I'm a seasoned veteran from that standpoint. Right. I, I boast my <clears throat> accolades a little bit, as you should as well. Mm -hmm. um, I am a three-time Pro Bowler, uh, Super Bowl champion back in 2008. So wow. I boast my uh, Super Bowl ring around wow. and use that as a little bit of motivation inside yes. the locker room, of course. Mm -hmm. um, so I like to, you know, take a little bit of credit for the Chiefs getting to that point. It's fine. Um, but uh, then I also was the Rookie of the Year in 2007 and was a part of the first all-female women's football team to play overseas. So the first Team USA um, back in 2010. So um, I played running back and slot receiver. And that was a huge blessing because um, it opened up a lot of doors for me. Mm -hmm. And I learned a lot not only about football but also just about um my faith, my journey, myself, and also how to interact and, and work with all sorts and all different kinds of people. So I, uh, I learned a lot of my leadership mm -hmm. um, abilities from those experiences. You know what, that's awesome. And that kind of brings me into it. Of course, I, I speak all over and I love to talk to people about what motivates them, what gets them going, how they deal with uh, the lows also, in which we'll talk about that with some football. I know there's some things, but first and foremost, Females playing football, that, that's right. a little bit different. When that happened, I mean, I, I know you're a sports fiend and, and you love it, but uh, was there any grief that you took from anybody of oh, why are you doing that? And, you know, you, you, look at you, you're so pretty. What are you playing football? You know, stuff like that. I mean, number one, you probably got some of that. How did you deal with it? Well, uh, there were a lot of times where <clears throat> people would ask, oh, you play that lingerie football stuff, oh, right? No. And <laughs> yes. So I would have to quickly correct them um, <laughs> and tell them that we played the real stuff 11 okay. on 11, helmets packed. Um, NFL rules. But um, I think for the most part, from my family perspective, they were all very supportive. My right. dad was a linebacker for the <clears throat> University of Nebraska. My mom um, was an athlete in her own right and was very, um, she was a single mom most of my life growing up. So okay. she was very supportive of following our dreams and doing whatever we wanted to. And so she was my number one cheerleader. Awesome. Um, and I think I got so much support from them that I didn't really see any of the naysayers until I actually got outside of that, mm -hmm. you know, that family bubble. So it was very interesting because when I first got recruited to play on the team, um, it was when I was playing flag football, my powder puff team mm -hmm. in high school. And when the offensive coordinator came up to me and said, Hey, you know, you should come play for us. I kind of laughed right. and I said, women playing football in Texas of all places, right? right? Where you're it is a, a religion. Oh yes, exactly. <clears throat> mm -hmm. You're a kicker, you're a cheerleader and um, all those boys down there weigh 230 plus. Right. So good, good luck playing football. Um, but then when I went to one of the tryouts, I absolutely fell in love with it. And there were a couple times going through, I, I did that while I also went to college and I went to a junior college down there in Dallas. And there were a couple times where I'd show up in mm -hmm. classes with like bruises all over my arms and the teachers would pull me aside or the professor oh, would wow. say, Hey, or you know what? Good for them though. Yeah, well, that's I mean, true. I mean, yeah. real, I mean, I mean, I know it, it, it's because of the reason it, it may have been different, but right. good for them for at least noticing and, and being aware of that. Yes. Yeah, for sure. So I like like that you put that perspective and that spin on you it hadn't had that one I yet. didn't think no. about that at yeah. all um, because I'm sure they had to go out of their comfort zone to do that right so um, yeah there were a couple times where they'd be like are you is everything okay at home and I'm like yeah you know I just I just play football you know I just get beat up all the time and it's by my choice I right. choose this right so um, I, I think there were there were the doubters out there who thought hey you're gonna end up getting hurt hey is this actually what you want to do because mm -hmm. um, I ended up turning down softball scholarships okay. to play football and you didn't 
don't get paid much to play women's football. Right. So um, giving up a scholarship, choosing to do that instead, there were also a lot of question marks regarding, hey, you know, how are you going to pay for college? Right. What, are, what are you doing moving forward? How is this actually going to help you in your yes. career? And at that point in my life, I wasn't quite sure. Right. Um, I wanted to be a marine biologist back then. Okay. And you're just like, I, I just want to do this. But then, after seeing all the reporters come out and do stories and stuff, um, I thought, okay, this is actually, I want to cover football for the rest of my life. So it actually turned out from the doubters into a very positive spin, opening a bunch of doors. Okay, so we're going to be a This Is Us episode. We're going to jump all over around the timeline <laughs> because I'm going to go a different direction now with that because you mentioned covering football. So that has morphed into what you do now. And let everybody know what you, you do now and, and how long you've been doing it. And we'll kind of go through that right your life. Yeah, absolutely. So I think um, the the two biggest doors that football opened for me were um, obviously becoming a sports reporter mm -hmm. um, and then also getting an opportunity to be the radio sideline analyst for the Chiefs Radio Network with you right. guys. And so I have been a sports reporter since 2011. Um, that's when I graduated Oklahoma State. And um, my first job was out in Dodge City, Kansas. Okay. I just covered high school sports. Um, and how far I've come since then. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but, every, but, 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 you know, that's a testament to things. <clears throat> I right. mean, except for the Tony Romos of the world, right. everybody starts at a lower level and they have yes. to build themselves up for the most part. Yeah. And that's what <clears throat> people have to recognize about this industry, too, is mm -hmm. that you don't just jump to ESPN. You don't right. just jump to the NFL Network or the Chiefs Radio Network. Right. You have to start in the middle of nowhere mm -hmm. and you have no idea where that first job's going to come. Right. So I tell people my one piece of advice for broadcasters mm -hmm. who want to be in this is be willing to go anywhere right. because you just have no idea. I think I sent out 60 different applications. Oh, wow. Spring break of my senior year, I got two callbacks. So hmm. you just have to be ready to go. Just wing it. Okay, so you were in Dodge City, then you ended up going to Wichita, my yes. home area, correct? Yeah. And you were there for a few years? Yep, got to cover Rose Hill, right? Yes, yep. absolutely, so the Rockets. some Rockets. There's your uh, shout out. Football, I'll, I'll say Mulvane also in the Wildcats, because I was there before that, but <laughs> okay. yes. Okay, represent, mm -hmm. yes. yes. So I spent quite a bit of time down there. Um, <clears throat> I was there for three years mm -hmm. in Wichita as the, uh, kind of the weekend sports anchor slash third man on the totem pole, um, and got to cover the Royals run to the World Series while I was down there. Mm -hmm. And much more high school sports. Yes. So um, that was also when the Shockers went to the Final Four. Oh, so okay. So there Very was nice. a little bit of yeah. all that good stuff. Shockers really on. rule Wichita. There's yeah, no they doubt do. about it. They are, they are the number one. There are so many times in Wichita that if I wore blue or purple, yeah. Yeah. people were like, I'm sorry, you're a Jayhawks yeah. fan or you're a Wildcats <laughs> yep, fan. And absolutely. I'm like, well, Clearly, I'm doing my job if you think I'm both a Wildcats and a Jayhawks. Exactly. So, um, yeah, Shockers are number one down there mm -hmm. um, with Greg Marshall ruling the roost. But I spent three years down there. And then, um, I know we're going to get a little bit more into this, mm -hmm. but... Um, the reason that I ended up in Kansas City was actually just a, I, I call it a God coincidence, mm -hmm. um, because our company actually got bought out by another company, and I was the first contract up. And okay. so I came up to Kansas City for one of the final Chiefs games, and a gentleman by the name of Brad Fanning and Nathan Vickers, who okay. was KCTV5, um, saw me doing a live shot, right. and they said, hey, you know, you should just you should just come up here and like meet our news director and see right. um, what, what you think about up, up here because we I'm going to be leaving and mm -hmm. somebody needs to obviously take this role. And again, it's like, no way. Like, right. we're going to stay in Wichita. Brad, my husband, had just gotten a promotion in Wichita. We mm. just bought a house. We've oh, been in wow. a house for like three months. Okay. And, Perfect. Um, it always happens that right, way. Of course. Mm -hmm. um, and so then I ended up finding out I went up there. They fell in love with me. It was a lot of fun. I come back. I end up finding out that my contract's one of the first ones up. So they're like, well, if you have a job in Kansas City, go ahead. <sighs> and so Brad, I told Brad about it, and he said, we're, we're going to pray about it. And we did. And about 24 hours later, he uh, woke me up and in the middle of the night and said, I've been praying about it, and I think we need to go to Kansas City. Wow. So that's, you know what? Uh, again, we're going to segue again because number one, you're talking about your faith and you and I both are Christians and we have that on our sleeve. And uh, I, I love to talk about that and we're going to get into that more. But uh, I want to also talk about your husband, Brad, and the fact of, I mean, for you to do what you do, and he knew that, I mean, he has to know that for the most part to, to get to where you want to get, there's going to be two or three different steps. And, you know, 
he's been so supportive all, all along the way, hasn't he? Yeah, he has been phenomenal. And that's one of the things I've talked with you multiple right. times is that significant <clears throat> others definitely get the shaft when it comes to being an athlete, when it comes to being a broadcaster. Because on our first date mm -hmm. in Dodge City, I told him, I said, if you want to keep pursuing this, that's great. But you need to know that we're going to be moving every two to three years. Right. So have that in your back pocket. Recognize that it's going to be really difficult for you as a significant other to stick with me mm -hmm. because that those are my goals. Those are my dreams and nothing's going to get in the way of that. And he has been incredible. Like I mentioned, it's like right. he got the promotion in Wichita, but he was willing to take a demotion to come up here to Kansas city with wow. me. And, um, again, by the grace of God, we've been here for about four years now and he just got a promotion here in Kansas city about two months ago. So he's kind of back to where he was but you don't know that coming right. into this. I mean, that is just a God thing because when he makes those sacrifices, there was no expectation of him getting back to that point. It is, I am going to fully and completely support you. And the goal once we get there is to get to the top. So he has been absolutely phenomenal. Wow. And you want know, to expand on that a little bit in terms of, I'm going to go to your Twitter account, which if you want to follow Danny, she's a great follow at, what is it? At KCTV Danny. Yeah, at KCTV Danny. Um, but the thing that I bring that up about that is on your profile, I love the in fact, I think it's basically said, God, God gave me the gifts, I give him the glory. Uh, ju just talk about it. I mean, it sounds certainly the way it's supposed to be with you and your husband, which is God is at the center of your life. Yeah, and I put it in all caps just so that people <clears throat> see that first and foremost, yeah. because you can rattle off all of your accolades, but at the end of the day, that's what matters most. Right. I want people to recognize that if someone comes up to me and asks me, hey, who are you? Right. I am not the sports director for KCTV right. five. I'm not a former athlete. I'm not a pro bowler. I am a child of Christ. Right. And that is where I want my identity to be. Because at the end of the day, once you strip all of that away, I mean, you can lose your job, right. you can lose your family, you mm -hmm. can lose, um, anything that you, you know, center your identity around. But at the end of the day, you can't lose Jesus and you can't lose God and he will always be there for you. So I just want people to know that I cannot do anything without him and right. I cannot do anything without his strength. At the end of the day, if I don't have that, I have nothing. nothing. Mm -hmm. So um, I want everyone to know that, and I want him to know that he obviously gave me the gifts. I want him to recognize that. Right. I, I want to recognize I want him to know that I right. recognize that. He, he knows what you meant. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Praise him. Um, <laughs> because those words don't always come out of your mouth. Right. Um, but yeah, so I, I just want people to recognize and hopefully I can be a platform right. as well. Right. Because it has changed my life so much that I want other people to experience that joy. Yeah, and you talk about that platform. When I speak, I speak on so many different things. And of course, one of them, unfortunately, is the fact of me having a marriage fail after 24 years, which had you know a majority to do with me. Uh, but my sports and everything that's happened to me, good, bad, and different, has given me a platform to talk to people and make sure they understand that uh, you know, they're, they're no different than me. You know, people that look at us sometimes because we're a little bit more public than others that, oh, they, it must be perfect. And the fact is it's not. And I think it's important to let people realize uh, that everybody goes through trials and tribulations. You have somebody that you can depend on in God. And that's certainly gotten me through. And, and certainly there's been times in my life where I've strayed away from it and you just kind of get away and then you come back. And that's the beautiful thing about, you know, you know, trust in Christ and faith is which, which is he's always there for you. So I, yeah. I, I love that a lot. You know, the other thing I talk about a lot, I think I've talked to you about it, is is suicide awareness and yeah. suicide prevention, because I don't think it's Kevin Bacon and six degrees of separation. It's one degree of separation. Sure. I think it's something that is just uh, really worth talking about. So, okay, let's get back to, um, you're coming to Kansas City okay. uh, yeah. from Wichita. Uh, you're going to get that job. At the same time, was that when Dan Israel started talking with you? I mean, yes. did, did things kind of coincide with that? Yeah. Could, um, so <clears throat> I had been here for, so I came up here in June. And then when did training camp start? End of July? End of July, okay. yes. Okay. So Dan Israel came up to me at the end of July. We were. At I guess we camp. should clarify. Dan Israel is oh. the executive producer for the Chiefs Radio Network, and he knows all and sees all, and it's pretty amazing. He's kind of a big deal. Uh, yes, he so is. So when he approaches you, you listen. Yes. Um, so he approached me at training camp, and he said, hey, look, I would like to talk to you sometime about some things that are going on with the radio network, um, whether or not it actually works out, not sure, but let's have coffee sometime. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, you know, 
know, this would be kind of cool. So um, he took me to coffee at Starbucks a couple days later after having that conversation. Mm -hmm. And he said, hey, you know, we've got some things going on with the radio network. Um, right. We're going to move Kendall up to the booth for road games, but we need somebody down on the sideline. And we'd really like to have a female voice to change things up a little bit. And I said, okay. He goes, but the first thing I have to know, you say you're a football player, but do you know football? Right, yes. And <clears throat> I'm like, okay, that's a very good question mm -hmm. because there is, a, there is a stipulation. And I said, yes, um, can I draw you a route tree? And he kind of looks at me and he's like, sure. <laughs> so I grabbed, a, I grabbed a napkin and I wrote out a route tree for him and gave it to him. And he said, oh, well, all right, let's do this. He's yes. like, I can't, I can't guarantee you much money out of it, but mm. I think it would be really good for our broadcast. And I think it would be really good for your resume. And I think right. we'd have a lot of fun. I'm like, okay, yeah, let's do this. Uh -huh. So that's how it started. And then obviously, as you know, it blossomed into something a little bit more and I got to be a part of everything yeah. you guys do. You know, and it was, a, it was a great time. I remember that. And, um, just the group on the road. I mean, uh, Nate, Eric, Steve, Travis, you know, Dan, Mitch. I mean, we just had a really nice thing. It was really a lot of fun and maybe ended sooner than we would have liked. But but uh, the, the fact is just talk about the camaraderie because I, I, I just remember, I mean, you're just one of the guys and, and I mean, we're joking <laughs> yeah. around with everybody and it was always, I always found it interesting that the, some of the guys, you would joke with them about things that they weren't sure they could joke about and they would <laughs> yeah. throw them for a loop. And, and, and it was, I mean, it was, I mean, I still remember after the game in Chicago, we're out there, you're trying to do your stand up for, yeah. for TV and we're just out there just, you know, having a grand old time with you it was something that should have taken her maybe five minutes, took her about 35 minutes because of, uh, but we got a great demo Oh, we do. Yeah. You'll, yeah. I, I, I have a feeling you can probably <laughs> see that some of that on your screen right now. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> oh, that would have been so good. Hang on, I'll do it again. Hey, let me do one like this. Okay, I'll just start rambling. <laughs> he didn't even know. <laughs> just talk, just talk about the, the those friends you made during that time. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> It was an absolutely life-changing experience because I not only formed, you know, closer relationships with some of the Chiefs coaching staff and the players and the mm -hmm. people behind the scenes. Alan Wright was phenomenal. I have to give him a shout out yes. because they not only carried my gear, but allowed me to go into the stadiums with them early. Right. So I formed a really unique bond with them. Tiffany Morton as well was awesome. Uh -huh. um, but then when it comes to the radio network, you guys, that entire crew was a group that I have become best friends with. Mm -hmm. And I love everything about every single one of you guys because there were moments that, you know, things would go awry and things would go crazy. But you would always have Dan, who was like the center, the rock, who just mm -hmm. made things happen and mm -hmm. took that leadership. And, um, and, and Nate, who was always like the second-hand man, and he right. wants to make sure that, okay, Dan's doing this, I've got you guys under control. And right. Eric was always there. We had faith talks all the time mm -hmm. on um, our bus rides home about family and um, what was going on in our lives. And I, I just thought it was such a unique group because we could. We could joke like the guys. Right. We could be goofy, but in the same breath at the end of the day, we all knew that we had each other's backs. Right. And that's something that I will cherish for the rest of my life because we were, we all brought something so right. different to the table, mm -hmm. but no one was ever like jealous of each other. Mm -hmm. And we all worked together in a way that made the broadcast better, but it also made us better people. Yeah. I, I, I think it's great in the fact that, I mean, the goal was to do a great game and, and all that, but the reward to me was the journey. And I, I hope that's what people get out of life each and every day, which is, it, I mean, once you get to your goal, what you're trying to do, all of a sudden it moves. And I, I think if you don't enjoy the moment, enjoy the journey, uh, then things can get a little bit haywire. And um, I, I think it's interesting that, um, or people would find it interesting that it's, it's that journey on the bus ride. You know, people always ask me what I miss from football. And it's like, yeah. I miss the locker room. I miss yeah. being a kid, you know, you know, you know, scaring people and, you know, getting up on an ice <laughs> machine and jumping on, on them as they come by, you know, silly stuff like that. But th that's what gives life spice, I think. For sure. Well, and we both have our rings. We do. Yours us, is a first place ring. Mine is a second hey, place ring. What? Although it's, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping I, you know, I, I should get uh, yeah. one of those first place rings coming here exactly. sooner than later. But we recognize that having accomplished one of the highest 
accomplishments of our sport right. that these are very fleeting. These yeah. rings will garner dust mm -hmm. and they once you reach that it's like you're hungry for more and mm -hmm. it's never enough. Right. So it goes back to our faith and the fact that you have those journeys and those yes. those teammates and the camaraderie is mm -hmm. that those are the things that you will have forever. These mm -hmm. these yeah. go away. These don't mean anything after a while. You know, I, I remember Coach Ditka, I was fortunate enough to play for him for three years, and that's the one thing he said. He goes, the money will come and go. He goes, but the memories that you make with your teammates and your mm. coaches will last forever. Right. And that's one thing for, for me maybe to say it to somebody. It's quite another for a Hall of Famer like you know, right. uh, you know uh, Coach Ditka to say it. But I heard those same things from Vermeil, from Herman, Edwards, from, from Jim Mora, from Bill Cowher, they all espouse that same thing, which was, you know, it's the memories you make. And, and you know, I go back to my, my years uh, that we went to the Super Bowl with the, the Steelers. I remember the Super Bowl somewhat, but what I remember is, is Thursday nights after practice, we would go to a bar just right down the way. We'd play some cribbage and have a, a beer. And it was just a team building thing. And I, I, I remember also that on Friday, you know, we'd call out some people if they weren't there, like, hey, yeah. what, what's the deal? I mean, this is what we do afterwards. You, right. you, you don't have to have a beer. You don't have to play cribbage, but you need to come and talk. And we, we're trying there. to build build relationships. And I, I think that's a, that's a big thing. I think this life in general is about relationships, how you manage them, how you deal with them, good, bad, and indifferent, because nothing's perfect. But um, it, it's, I, I don't know, it's very uh, inspirational to hear you talk about that. Yeah, because, <clears throat> and I think the, the Hall of Famers and the Super Bowl champions and the Super Bowl MVPs, they're the ones who have that the perfect platform to say that. Right. Because those of us who are still chasing that dream or still have that goal are still chasing it. And we believe once you get there, that's the epitome. That's, epitome. <clears throat> that's the pinnacle. That's what your whole life has been centered around is getting that Super Bowl, getting that career, getting that job that you've always wanted, getting that family. Mm -hmm. But that's not the end all be right. all. And once you get there, you realize, well, then what else am I, am I living for? Mm -hmm. And so those guys are the perfect example because they've been there and right. now they're on the other side of it and they provide the inspiration and the, um, the, the advice right. so that once you do get there, you can understand where they're coming from. Yeah, it's, I, I think it's the A-B paradigm, which is if I do A, I will get B, and that will make me happy. Yeah. But the fact is, when you do A and you do get B, you're happy for a little bit. Right. Then, it, then, then all of a sudden, it's like, well, well, now what? And so B moves, and now you're, you're like, well, I've got to do, I've got to do another A to get B. But the big thing is being where your feet are, enjoying the moment, enjoying the process, good, bad, or indifferent. As I said a little bit ago, if you can do that, then I think that is a, a, certainly a big key to life. Yeah, and recognizing <clears throat> the people who got you there. Yes. I think there are so many times that people get to that pinnacle and, and only thank, you know, a few people, but there are so many humans along the way right. that have impacted you or made some kind of, um, have influenced you in a way that have made you who you are today. Right. And so to recognize all of those people from your kindergarten teacher to yes. your mom, to your best friends, to even just, you know, somebody who you ran across at a coffee shop who right. gave you some words of inspiration. Yep or um, having these conversations with you, Kendall. Yep. Like these are the moments that build the person that I am and I'm sure you have those people yes. too. So I think everybody needs to you know, humble themselves and recognize that you are not where you are because of you. There right. are so many different pieces to the puzzle and to recognize that I think makes you a better person too. Yeah, I think it's, they say gratitude, gratitude is, is the, the ability to recognize and be thankful for what you are and where you are and understand uh, that you did not do this alone, that right. there was other people that added to that. Uh, that's not verbatim. Obviously, Bre Brene Brown will butcher me for, for saying that because <laughs> I, I got it from her, but I'm a, I'm a big so. Brene Brown fan, <laughs> so uh, that's one big one. Now, you talked about relationships yeah. <clears throat> in so many different uh, situations. Um, you know, it was a big year for the Chiefs this year, certainly. Uh, winning the Super Bowl, uh, so many different storylines, so many different people added, so many relationships, all that. Uh, but one that you, you know, you're around the team on a weekly basis uh, for a while on the sideline also. I mean, you formed some really good relationships yeah. uh, with some of the guys, just like I have. It's funny, some guys you just click with more yeah, than others. I've totally found that. Crazy. And and I, I think one that you really clicked with a lot is Chris Jones, oh right? Oh my gosh, <clears throat> yes. I, Chris Jones and I have a really good friendship and relationship, I mm. think, because of just the way that I came in. When I came in and he came in around 
around, it's kind of around the same time-ish. Mm -hmm. um, he was one of the first interviews that I did for the radio network. Right. And I walked up to him and I, you know, asked him a couple questions. And then I shook his hand because whenever I talk to those guys, I want to make sure that they know I got a firm handshake. I'm here to do Yeah, business. there you go. Like, that's my sole purpose in here. <laughs> I have no other reasons. Um, and he grabbed my hand and he flipped it around and he said, what is that? I said, well, that's my Super Bowl ring. And he was like what? No way. So I explained it to him. I gave him the background and I looked at him and I said, you're going to get one of these one day. Wow. So very cool. I just wanted yeah. you to know that. And he was like, I think we will too. And sure enough, here we are. I think that was two years ago, two or three years wow. ago. And, um, now he is going to end up with his own Super mm -hmm. Bowl ring. But I think that dynamic, like I talk to him about his kids all the time yep. and his family life. Mm -hmm. And he talks to me about my family life and, um, just my football playing days and mm -hmm. like what I see out on the football field. And we can talk on that level. Um, so that makes that relationship very unique. Another one that I formed this year was McCole Hardman. Yeah. It was so funny and he's so down to earth and being able to talk to him about receiver stuff is very, yes. very good. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> And so I learned a lot from him this year. And also, he wants to be a reporter someday. Oh, really? So at okay. the Super Bowl, I gave him our microphone, and he went around and did interviews. Oh, you know, I us. saw that very much. So very nice. he is uh, between Chris Jones and McCole Hardman. Those are two guys that have really um, inspired me and taught me a lot about the game of football. I think that's nice for people to hear because we we, we place people up on a pedestal. But there, I, I always said while I played, you know, football is what I do. It's not who I am. Right. And and actually, I would be embarrassed if people thought all I was was just a football player. Not that that's bad, right, no. but that's, there's got to be more to me. But, you know, people don't always understand about Chris Jones. This is, this is a gentle giant. I mean, he's able to flip the switch back and forth. Uh, I, I find it uh, funny with him sometimes because he'll even flip the switch in terms of how he's going to give an interview. You can right. see him being very gregarious, and then, then you ask him questions, and it just goes down to a yep. little bit lower tone, which is, which is fine. I get that. I know why. But this is a guy that is just... He, he just really enjoys life. He does. And that's why I think we are all just so drawn to him is mm -hmm. because there are so many guys out there who will put up those walls the minute that right. camera turns on or the minute that a microphone gets in their face. Mm -hmm. But he shows his personality and he's not afraid to show what he believes. He's another believer who mm -hmm. is very outspoken about his faith on social media and right. will even say it in the locker room. So those conversations are fun to have. But... I think that a lot of people, they see his helmet. They see him getting up in Brady's face. They right. see him being the team sack leader. They're like, man, this guy is crazy. Like, right. he is wild. But he is so much more than that. And we are also seeing that with some of the stuff that goes on behind the scenes. With even, you know, last year with the contract negotiations. And now this year with all of that coming up. And there's all those dynamics going on between the defensive line. And you guys have to realize that these guys are people too. Right. And it's just like you and me mm -hmm. in contract negotiations with our bosses or having to deal with that kind of stuff with our jobs. It's right. the exact same thing. So even though this stuff is publicized mm -hmm. and the entire world gets to know about it, right. it's no different than you and me. Wow. Okay. So we've talked about a lot of your highs in life. Um, but we all have lows, um, and, and maybe there's something you may bring up. But I know one uh, going way back was when when you were playing football, you had a lot of success. Uh, but you had one, for lack of a better word, horrific injury. Yeah, um, <clears throat> back in 2008, it was the year that we actually won the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. uh, it was two or three games into the regular season, and we were playing Atlanta. I remember that vividly. Um, I was having one of my best games, and I ran a 26 off G play. And one of the oh, linebackers. Oh, the old 26 off G play. Yeah. I remember it No well. big deal. It's yes. a, a very Tyreek Hill esque where you're coming oh. in from the bunch and you go around and you, yes, yes, as a small receiver, you go up the middle, um, take the handoff and go up the middle. So I had a linebacker come over the top and underneath. I still got about three yards on the play. So okay. I just want to put that out Absolutely. there. Absolutely. <laughs> just, um, just saying. Just saying. Um, but it snapped my fibula in two places. Wow. And so I heard a pop. And That's generally frowned upon. <laughs> you know, it's not, yes. it's not great. Um, so I tried to stand up. My leg gave out. And I thought, okay, this is not great. Hopefully it's nothing bad. Um, but my fullback lifted me up by my pads and had to kind of walk me off the field. Mm -hmm. um, and when I sat down, I was like, no, I'm done. So they ended up going in on my right leg and putting a plate and five screws in there. Um, and then I ended up rehabbing so quickly that I got back for playoffs, was mm -hmm. able to play in the playoffs nice. and then started in the Super Bowl. Wow. So the rehab was a long, it felt like a long process. Arduous, it yes. was faster than most, um, fibula breaks because of the plate that they put in there. And because I was absolutely crazy and wanted to be back because I knew it was such a special season for us. Right. Um, but 
that was something that taught me a lot about myself because mentally you have to be completely there. Physically, you have to push yourself over the limits of what you think you're capable of and also not knowing if you're going to be able to play again. There were multiple right. times that the doctors would say, yeah, you probably shouldn't go back and play some full contact football right. with this injury. And I'm like, "You don't you dare tell me that. Right. You don't know me. Um, doctors, they know pretty well. Right. They, yeah. I mean, yes. Yeah. But um, I just felt like it, it, it was a moment in my life that really taught me a lot about who I was, what I wanted to accomplish, and just the the mental limits that we can push ourselves to that we don't even think that we're capable of. That, that brings up the point that I was going to say you read my mind, which is oftentimes until we're faced with adversity, we really don't recognize, I think, as human beings what we're capable of. And there's the physical side of it, but I think more importantly, it's the mental side. I mean, you can't do anything, I don't believe, physically if you don't have it I mean, mentally or emotionally, and you can't tell yourself that, uh, you know, I've, I've got to give more than I'm, I'm going right here. Yeah. You, you... You think that you're pushing yourself to 100% mm -hmm. on a day-to-day -day basis. There are days that you feel worn out. There are days that you feel right. like you can't go anymore. And you are pushed to that mental, emotional, and physical limit. But then when you actually face that kind of adversity right. and you are faced with, hey, you may not have a job tomorrow or you just lost somebody very important to you mm -hmm. or you may not be able to walk again or not be able to play again. Those are the days that make you stronger and make you recognize that once you get on the other side of that, that you can become so much more than you ever thought possible. Wow, I, I can't add anything to that. That's Ugh. just so very well said. So we've talked about your football days and what you did. Uh, a lot of relationships formed with that. One very interesting relationship in, in Katie Sowers because of, yes. you know, with the topical and the Super Bowl, Chiefs playing the 49ers, Katie Sowers, a for, former teammate of yours yep. on that Super Bowl team. No, she was actually she, part no. of the world championship team. The world team championship because team. Because she, <clears throat> and part of the all-star Okay. Because she actually played for the Kansas City Tribe oh. while I played. So she was up here in KC. Okay. And then she played for the KC Titans when they ended up changing their name and ownership. Okay. So she and her sister Liz, are, they're identical twins. Okay. And they are some of the most phenomenal athletes uh -huh. you will ever come across. Liz is, she's a big bruiser. Like she will, she lit me up a couple times because she right. played both ways. She mm -hmm. played quarterback, receiver, tight end, linebacker. You name it. Um, but we have become really good friends because n not only did we have those relationships mm -hmm. on the football field, but we were also able to bond off of the field with kind of our goals in life. Like Katie always wanted to be a coach. That was her goal. Liz wanted to be the best quarterback she possibly could be, mm -hmm. and that's what ended up putting her on all-star teams and Team USA. Gotcha. And I was a very driven individual as well, and I wanted to be a broadcaster, and I wanted to, as I told as I told them, I, always, I tell people this a lot. I always tell people, I want to change the world. I yeah. want to do something that changes the world. And I want to have that platform. And so that was kind of something that we bonded over. And Katie, I've stayed in touch. I've stayed in touch with both Katie and Liz. Liz is still a quarterback up here for the Titans. Okay. Um, and Katie, obviously, coached for the 49ers. But she got her start. Um, Scott Pioli brought her to Atlanta. Okay. And so she got her start there and then followed Shanahan over to the 49ers. And the fact that she was the first female to coach in a Super Bowl was phenomenal and she was going up against the Chiefs which yeah. were her childhood team yeah. which made it so much more special and she told me so she's got a tattoo on her arm of the Kansas City skyline oh wow and um, she said I will not cover this up on Sunday because this is what makes me who I am good for and her and so that is her background and she and her family have overcome a lot of adversity as well her father um, suffered a stroke a couple years ago oh wow and so that um, took away his ability to speak and his ability to walk. So he was hmm. not able to be at the Super Bowl, which was very, very taxing on their whole family I'm and very sure. emotional. But the fact that she recognized that he was one of the biggest reasons, if not the biggest reason that she was in that position in the first place, that right. he was there with her, even if he couldn't be there physically. Wow, you know, it, it's amazing to me. Like I said, she was the first uh, female coach in the NFL. Of course, now in the Super Bowl as well. Yep. Um, I don't know that you have any uh, connection with Shanahan uh, in in general, but just I, I, I think it's it's something special that, that a coach like that, I mean, somebody had to take a chance mm -hmm. on somebody to be the first. And I think that says something about him as a coach. I think he was the actually the coach of this year. They, they had a phenomenal season. Yep. Not as good as the Chiefs, obviously. Nah. But, uh, you know, there's, there's nothing wrong with number two. <laughs> uh, but I joke around that. But, but everything I hear about him is he's a great individual and to give somebody like that yeah. a chance. But, but also the fact is, 
I don't think she would have gotten the chance or he wouldn't have done it if she didn't completely uh, deserve it. And, and when you saw the specials, I mean, the, the players that she coaches, I mean, she has their complete and total respect. Yeah, and that's one of the <clears throat> things, too, is that we as females are always asked, hey, who, you know, helped you get to where you are? Who's your idol? And a lot <clears throat> of times we're expected to rattle off other females, but we are trailblazers in these industries as coaches, as broadcasters. And a lot of times it's men who are the ones who open up those doors right. and are open-minded enough to actually bring us in and give us a chance. So like like Dan Israel brought me onto the radio broadcast. Well, and I would even and say Rick Burkholter with the Chiefs. With and, 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 and yeah, yep. with all them and the, and the trainers there. I mean, he's been he's been the trailblazer, I believe, for the NFL. Yeah. And, and I think that, you know, I have a, a great relationship with Rick because he was my first trainer when he was with the Steelers. Really? going way back to 1992 so I've known him a long time he's top-notch obviously but uh, go on I'm sorry no I think that's that's perfect yeah that's what we're talking about it's those yeah. men who have the open-mindedness enough to trust you and believe hey you know what we're gonna give you a shot because we think that you're just as good as we are and you don't have that pride to think oh there's a woman coming into a man's world and kind of you know put in the stiff arm no they open they open the door for us and they say you know what we believe that you can do this don't let us down. Right. Don't prove prove everybody else wrong, but prove me right. And so I think that's so important from Shanahan's perspective to allow that to happen, uh, from Dan's perspective, from Rick's perspective. And there are so many different men out there who deserve just as much credit as the women for getting us into these positions. But then also back to your point, you get those positions, but then you better prove your crap. Right. That you can stay there. Yeah, but but that goes for male, female, anybody. I mean, you get a chance. People take a chance on you. I just like the fact that, as they say, they, they look at somebody as an individual, not a man or a woman, but as uh, uh, somebody who can do the job that's being asked. And, and when you get that chance, you've got to take advantage of it. So um, we've been talking for a while. I think this will be a nice one uh, to kind of end with. And then I'll ask you ab about what is your extra point. But um you had a very unique opportunity this year that you took a, a, a hold of in terms of uh, being a member of the first all-female broadcast team for a bowl game. T uh, tell, tell everybody about that. So it um, yeah. kind of took me by surprise because when I was originally called uh, by the play-by-play -play announcer for TCU, mm -hmm. um, he said, hey, you know, we're looking for um, a crew to put together, an all-female crew for this Cure Bowl down in Orlando. Um, and, and we think that you'd be a really good candidate. You know, we've heard from um, a, a couple different Big 12 play-by-play -play guys that, you know, you know your stuff. Mm -hmm. So we'd, we'd like to invite you to be a part of this. And at first I'm like, okay, you know, I've done sideline reporting. Like, this will be great. I, right. I can totally do this. By the time we got to the end of the conversation, he said, oh, by the way, um, we would have you be the color analyst for this game. And have you done that before? I said, well, not in the actual capacity of being a color analyst, right. but I have learned from the best. Yeah. So I think that I could probably handle that responsibility. And as long as you guys are well aware that this would be my first opportunity doing this, I, I think that I would like to take it head on. And he was very much like, yes, no, you, you can do this. I think this is going to be great. So I end up going down to Orlando in December and <clears throat> I meet up with Jamie Say, who's the sports director of the CBS affiliate down in Orlando. She did the play by play. Mm -hmm. She was also the play by play voice for the Orlando Apollos for the AAF. Okay. Um, which unfortunately folded a little yeah. bit earlier than they would have hoped. <laughs> um, but she ended up with a ring because they had the best record. So there you go. There you <clears throat> go. Um, and then Melanie Newman, who's a phenomenal sideline reporter um, was the sideline reporter for that event, and we became the first all-female broadcast crew for an FCS bowl game. One of the fun aspects of the 2019 FBC Mortgage Cure Bowl is the first all-female radio crew to call a football bowl subdivision game on a national radio network on Bowl Day Radio. Jamie Say, Danny Welniak, and Melanie Newman on the call. Jamie Say, the WAER Sports Director, 1997-1998 at Syracuse University. One of my first bosses in the business. And there's Melanie Newman, who has uh, spent the season with Liberty University football, so well-versed on the Flames. And Danny is an accomplished football player in her own right and sports director in Kansas City, Missouri. And... 
It is uh, with great pleasure that we now send you to Jamie Say, Danny Welniak, and Melanie Newman on the call. Two or three on that play. Yeah. The, go ahead, Danny. I was going to say the dual backs back there are a lot of the reason that you can set up plays like that, give Wirtz a potential option play, and that is why that was semi-successful. Yeah, gain of three, second and seven, ball at the 33 of Georgia Southern. Liberty leads the Cure Bowl 13 to 7 in the second quarter with 9.29 to go before halftime. Two in the backfield. It's Kennedy and King behind Shy Wirtz. And Wirtz is going to keep. Now option pitch to King. Takes one hit. He's still on his feet and he's finally dragged out of bounds at the 35 yard line. Gain of two. Another one of those options I was talking about with Wirtz taking control of that one. The fake to the left linebacker expands, opens up the middle of the field. And it's another way of kind of being able to run the outside pitch, even a quarterback draw. So if the linebacker stays inside and forces the QB to bounce it out outside of the tackle. Third and five for Georgia Southern. Eagles at their own 35 yard line. Works breaks the huddle operating from the pistol. Two receivers split out to either side. Wesley Kennedy is the lone setback. Wirtz takes the snap, wants to throw, steps up in the pocket. Now he rolls out to his right, fires complete, but short of the first down. Making the catch was Caleb Hood, a freshman, but he's about two yards shy. And I, it actually got a lot of really good traction. I, I, well, was I believe a, that. A that you shouldn't be surprised. First, though, because we have seen other all-female broadcast crews and other um, – avenues of okay. sports other sports and there are a lot of people out there and we did we did get some of these tweets that they're like hey go back to the kitchen or go make me a sandwich seriously yeah wow but you know that those are the trolls out there who just have <laughs> exactly. nothing better to do with their yes, time absolutely so you kind of laugh those off in this day and age <laughs> By 2019, you hadn't had an all-female broadcast crew for an FBS game. Blew my mind. And most of the Yeah, that surprised me as good. well. Yeah. Very cool. Awesome. Well, you know, I, I, the name of the show is The Extra Point. Uh, we're getting close to it. Mm -hmm. uh, I should have warned you beforehand, but, I mean, just life in general and, and anything you want to impart, uh, what's your extra point? Ooh. Um... Okay. My extra point is very simple but I have always been told throughout my broadcast career to kiss it, which is to keep it simple, stupid. Mm -hmm. um, and so my extra point is to make sure that you keep your priorities in line. My three priorities are faith, family, and then football, which is also a metaphor for just your career in general right. and sports. So whenever those priorities get out of line, I have been humbled. The good Lord has put me in my place. And I have also learned to recognize that that is him making sure that I put him first, that I put my family first. And then football is that extra bonus that I get to love and work my hobby for the rest of my life. So as long as you keep your priorities in line and you put other people first, your life is going to be very fruitful, even if you have to endure adversity. So keep your priorities, faith, family, and football. I don't think that I can follow up on that uh, at, in, in any way, shape, or form. That is beautiful. So I appreciate it. I appreciate you taking time. I'm very fortunate to know you. I appreciate, appreciate you coming on uh, the show. And until next time, this has been uh, Danny Welniak. I'm Kendall Gammon, and it's been The Extra Point. Thanks. Thanks.